This conference will now be recorded. Great. Uh, so, uh, hi everyone. Uh, this particular session, we are going to talk about uh, the story writing part in the descriptive uh, paper which you are going to have in uh, my cat. So, all of you would be aware that uh, there are two paths in which the MyCAD descriptive paper can be uh, broken down into. First part is where you need to write a story. You will be given around four pictures. Uh, you have to write a story which covers those four pictures in it. And then you will have another set of three questions which are more around argument writing where a particular topic would be given to you. So this particular session, we are going to specifically talk about story writing. And in the next session, we are going to talk about the argument writing. Now, story writing. Now, first, first question which a lot of people ask that, what is the ideal length of the story? The ideal length of the story, considering the fact that you need to do argument writing also, is you should be aiming for 250 to 300 words, or say 200 to 300 words anything above or say around 250 to 300 is perfectly fine even 200 plus is good if your overall story is good so the only thing which you need to avoid is don't end up writing a 400 500 word story because you need to do argument writing within the same 35 minutes so you need to balance your time and secondly don't end up writing a 100 150 word or a 50 word story because that is too short for them to evaluate you so to anything between 200 to 300 ideal scenario 250 is is the ideal length which you should target for your story writing now one more thing which i have seen is you know because you get four pictures and those four pictures are labeled as a b c d or 1 2 3 4 at times i see i see that some people in the story they try to put up 1 2 3 4 or a b c d wherever they are covering those pictures you don't need to do that you don't need to explicitly mention in your story that where are you covering the given pic picture in the story. That is not required. They will understand it. You are only required to cover all the four images in the story. Okay. Then one more thing which I see, uh, you know, uh, as a question that comes up, do we write a title for the story or do we not write the title for the story or is it mandatory or something see ideally go and write the title of the story it's good to write it it always shows that you are very uh, structured in your thought process even if you will miss out at writing the title of the story that is not going to lead to your disqualification so you don't need to worry on not being able to come up with the title of the story but yes it is always good to come up with the title of the story so that it reflects your strong candidature so from your own performance perspective yes topic of the story is good to write but from the exam perspective it is not something which is mandatory to write okay that's another thing now another question which i get from a lot of uh, students you know over the last few years since the time we launched my cat course is do i need to specifically mention the description of the image in my story so for example if blue clouds or or a serene river is given to me in the image do i explicitly need to write the clouds or the river in my in my description of the story in, in and as a part of the text of my story there is no hard and fast rule around this you can explicitly mention the description of the image or you can use it to set up the context also so for example if you if you get the image of say river mountain etc you can use it to set the context of the overall background in which your story is developed rather than specifically mentioning the words rivers mountains etc in your story it's it's the all the images should be covered they can be covered directly or they can be covered indirectly 
but yes all the four images need to be covered you can use some of them directly in your story you can use some of them indirectly in your story is it clear so far now writing sequence before starting the story is not mandatory so in the exam as well as you know when you are taking the mock test you can put up the sequence over there after you have written the story because you know at times you may you may think of a sequence and that that sequence you may not end up following in the story so you can write that particular sequence at the you no know, at the end uh, once you have complete completed the story so vabab that's what i was saying Uh, you can you can cover a b c d in any sequence it could be d c b a it could be a b c d it could be b d c a it could be any sequence you don't need to cover the images in the specific order of a b c d now few things which you need to remember is because it's a short story writing remember you are not writing a novel you are not writing a 1000 word write up you are writing a 200 to 300 word short story it is very important for you to write a catchy first paragraph your first paragraph cannot be dull you have to be very very catchy and that is what is going to differentiate a good story from an average story or from a below par story so for example if i just say i heard my neighbor through the wall it is very dry but if i say the neighbor behind us practiced the scream therapy in his shower almost every day that becomes creative so my point is it's not about vocabulary remember it's not about vocabulary people write fantabulous stories even with very very simple vocabulary you are not supposed to showcase your vocabulary skills you are supposed to showcase your creative skills and for that it's important that how you structure your words how you write them and this is one point which i tell to students every time in the first session of the story writing develop characters in your story do not write your entire story in third person that is the most dull way of writing the story when you just write it in third person try to introduce characters try to develop them try to describe the characters try to come up with dialogues among the characters just like say you read a fiction novel you know say um, if i have to tell some of the more more you uh, know very very uh, cringy ones but maybe say very very popular among the common audience say if you follow someone like chetan bhagat how he develops the characters how he introduces them in the novel how he writes the dialogues right so similarly i'm not saying that be very very cringy but what i'm trying to say is take a cue from there that you need to develop your character you need to develop a protagon uh, protagonist in your story your story cannot be without a protagonist you need to have a protagonist in your story you need to show show ups and downs in the life of the protagonist using different uh, images given and and uh, and up writing a very very interesting climax try to prefer a climax which say no one could predict easily by by reading your first two paragraphs that's something which is going to uh, get you good brownie points but what is very important is your story should have characters your story should have dialogues among the characters that's where you become a better story writer as compared to someone who will write the entire story in third person now some people ask me that can i write a poem yes you can write uh, write it in the poetic format also that is completely fine but again then it has to be a good poem it cannot be something very very dull so unless you have been into writing poems don't take that route now some of the things you know which you can use while describing the character is you can have the name of the character you can describe the looks of the character that you know the character was thin thick fat uh, the state of uh, the clothes the kind of clothes which the character is wearing to showcase the status of the character Uh, facial expressions uh, the way the character walks the way the character talks you can use all these kind of things to demonstrate or say to build a character in your story 
just like say when you go and watch a movie there is a protagonist there are certain supporting characters try to build something around around a, a similar line where you have one main character and then you have certain supporting characters and and you include the images over there ishan it is okay to have typos but don't have very very easy spelling mistakes that is something which will you know come out as bad thing some some typos here and there are fine but you cannot be making big uh, spelling mistakes because the big spelling mistakes they are more than typo but more of your habit of writing wrong spellings so that's something which you should avoid now as i said the most beautiful stories which you would have read anywhere any novel any fiction any movie would have certain conflict of the characters would would have a character facing certain complication in life going to the flashback fighting through those tough conditions and then emerging as the winner so a very very popular format of writing a story or the way you see in a bollywood movie also is there is a protagonist uh, initially protagonist is is a very very um, you know a normal character living in a very haywire way then certain conflicting or complicated situations happen in his life he undergoes the entire change he then develops heroic qualities and emerges as the winner in the climax this is a very very typical flow in lot of fiction novels in lot of movies uh, if 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 you want you can you can you know follow a similar uh, a similar uh, flow as well where you showcase certain conflict among the characters you you show those characters undergoing certain complicated situations in their lives you can use a flashback kind of a thing or or you can you know use something where the character undergoes a change throughout the journey of the story and emerges and becomes a better person you can use that format as well now yes yes aditi i will share this pdf don't worry now one thing which i get from students is in the exam i am going to have very very less time how will i think about the story how much time should i give to the story how much time should i give to the argument writing and and moreover uh, what should be uh, what should be uh, my approach if nothing strikes me on the exam day so ideally out of 35 minutes which you are going to get in the examination i suggest you that you put 20 minutes in the story you put 15 minutes in the argument writing that is the standard time management which you should follow on the story part that how will i quickly think during the exam this is uh, now i'm going to tell you something which students have successfully done in previous years think of two or three standard templates of the story beforehand think of two or three templates of the story preferably say only two whatever images you get try to use one of those two templates and incorporate your images in those template in one of those templates you put up the images given and you write your story on the examination day which template is working for you which template is not working for you which template is good which template is not use mock tests for that so initially what you can do is think of three broad templates of story in next 5 to 6 mock tests of descriptive writing which you will take try to use these templates see which template you end up getting a good feedback from me in which template are you able to uh, incorporate all the images most of the times and then narrow down from 3 to 2 and maybe just go to the exam with two or one final template which you will use on your examination day do you understand what i'm trying to say over here what this is going to ensure is you save your time on the examination day you are not worried about thinking a lot so all the 20 minutes of story writing you can directly use in writing the story and not thinking the story and that's where this is going to save your time any questions anyone around story writing 
Anything which you want to ask? Okay, so have you all started to take your descriptive writing test so far? Ishan, I will never share a template with you. Template is what is students own IP. We we never share one student's template with others. As as you all will start taking the tests, I will share some of the best written stories, but I will never share a template of a of a student with a B student. But as what I will do is for first five tests which are going to get submitted, I will share with everyone the best stories written and the best argument writings written so that you get an idea that what are those people doing who are writing some good stuff. Thought process Ishan, thought process Ishan, as I said, has to be on the lines where you have one protagonist in your story. So I remember long back, you know, there was a student. Uh, she used to go with the thought process where she is going to use a daughter and her mother in the story. She will show the complications, the conflicts in their life. And it she will use how the daughter makes or say how the daughter faces those complications and conflicts and emerges or say makes the duo come out victorious whatever images she will get she will put into this she 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 can use say the conflict of relations she can use uh, things like divorce happening or or an extramarital affair happening or or say you know a conflict with a friend relationship with a friend breaking up or or situation where there is lack of say uh, finances she will use any any kind of ups and downs of the life in in in, in the duos uh, uh, journey and puts and fixes all the images over there. Do you do you get Ishan now? What I say when I'm saying about template, what what do I mean? Do I do you understand it now? So that's 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 something which people do. And she was a brilliant writer. She she ultimately you know uh, got her book published. Also she she did not join Mica because of quantitative aptitude cut off. But but. But the point is, was a wonderful writer, and this is how lot, lot, lot many people do it. So, my point is, and if very, very good writers also decide to go to the exam with a template in mind, that is how we all should be doing because that is something which is going to lead you saving your time and ultimately end up writing a good story. Okay. Any questions, anyone? Now, just to ensure that all of you can start writing, uh, start taking your descriptive writing test, let me talk a bit about argument writing also. Now, whenever you are writing an argument writing test, you will get a topic. You have to write for the topic against the topic and the editorial view about the topic. The standard thing which you should follow in your argument writing to be able to get brownie points is try to include real life facts, real life figures, real life examples in your argument writing. If you can include real life examples, correlate them to the topic given and incorporate in your answer, you will get brownie points. If you can talk about the standard facts, standard news, etc., things in your write up, that is going to get you brownie points in argument writing. At times, people say that what if I don't know the figures? What if I don't know the numbers to include over there? Come up with a hypothetical number, which is which is say somewhere somewhere in the broad, broad, broad uh, ballpark range and just say in the paper, according to XYZ survey, this percentage of people face this thing which is related to the given topic in this way. No one is going to go and check the survey. No one is going to go and check those reports manually while evaluating your paper, but you 
come out as a well informed writer in your argument writing and that is where you will get brownie points facts figures real life examples important to get brownie points in your argument writing and also in argument writing try to avoid the repetition of the points which you have written in one of the answers because all the three answers need to be written on the same topic try to avoid the repetition and also since the first two answers of your argument writing you need to write in bullet points do not start every bullet point with the same word because that shows that you are a person who does not know how to process your thoughts and write in a you know decent english if your every sentence consecutively is starting with the same first word try to avoid that thing try to include facts figures real life examples and you will get brownie points that that those are the two basic things which you need to remember for your argument writing okay any questions anyone akshita out of the three answers of argument writing first two answers are to be written in bullet point and the last answer is written in paragraph the answer which is written in paragraph needs to have 100 to 150 words uh, limit within that it is fine and in the bullet points answer you need to write 3 to 4 bullet points each there are three answers you will get in argument writing first two to be written in bullet points 3 to 4 bullet points each bullet point of 10 to 15 words last answer to be written in paragraph 100 to 150 words yes akshita isnail just uh, coordinate with shubham because he will check that which course you are in and he will see whether your course has mycat mocks in it or not he will help you out or you can message me on whatsapp i will connect you with shubham and he will help you out in getting the mycat uh, mock tests okay yes 3 to 4 points are enough akshita 3 to 4 points are enough okay so ideally out so the ideal dis, uh, lens of your four answers story writing anywhere between 200 to 300 250 good enough argument writing first two answers to be written in bullet points three to four bullet points each bullet point of 10 to 15 words last answer of argument writing to be written in paragraph 100 to 150 words is it clear to everyone the time distribution 20 minutes for story 15 minutes for argument writing how do i go about saving my time i go to the exam prepared with the template of the story everything is now clear about descriptive writing any more doubts any more questions which any one of you has okay so from tomorrow or whenever you feel like please start taking descriptive writing tests also every descriptive writing test i will be evaluating it manually when i send you the feedback i will send you your marks out of 1 to 10 on a scale of 1 to 10 for story i will send you your marks on the scale of 1 to 10 for argument writing for me the threshold is 8 marks for me the threshold for you to clear the test is 8 marks every every year i see that once a once a student start getting 8 in my evaluation he he is able to clear the descriptive writing in the exam so 8 there is no standard cut off as such but just for our own internal benchmarking so that you know where you stand and where you want where you need to reach we have set up this ballpark figure of 8 out of 10 okay yes yes uh, this this particular uh, video will be available to you khushboo uh, i will upload it and i will share its recording with you this pdf will also be available with all of you uh, this pdf and the video will be there in your course accounts by tomorrow akshita the first five descriptive writing tests which are which are live in your course accounts they are all based on the questions which have come over last 3 years so so if i have to give you one example 
two, I guess two, uh, three years back there was a topic on geopolitical uh, debates which happen on news channels. So the question was something like, do you think geopolitical debates happening on news channels are good? Geopolitical debates happening on news channels are not good. The third was to write a editorial column on geopolitical debates in news channels. So this is also one of the topics which has come in past Akshita. Ishan, it, it has to be subjective, but if you are a good writer, your, your subjectiveness shall not make the reader not understand that which picture is your uh, inference talking about. You can go to any extent in your inference till the time the reader is make is able to make out that your inference is from which picture. Okay. Akshita, any other question? Any other question, anyone? Perfect. So we will end the session here. You all can start taking descriptive writing tests. And uh, the next live session of my cat will be on word association. I will be taking the next session on word association where we will be solving around 10 to 15 to 20 questions of word association in the live class. Okay, word association and visual reasoning are two important topics of your convergent divergent thinking section. And now as you will start taking your descriptive writing tests, I will start sending you the feedbacks. As I said, I will I will evaluate you on the scale of 1 to 10 for story 1 to 10 for argument writing and you need to target crossing 8 as the threshold in my evaluation. Okay. Perfect. Great. So Ishan, we, I will send you the feedback. Don't worry. I'll, I'll send you the feedback by tomorrow. Great. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining a uh, recording of this video will be available to you in case you have any queries about story writing descriptive writing. Please feel free to ask in the group. Vatsal, you will get all the pending feedbacks for psychometric as well as for descriptive tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Good night.